All right, this one's going to be really short because I meant to include this on the previous video, but I forgot to. So let me go ahead and do a short little video on the blood-brain barrier. So the blood-brain barrier protects the brain from the contents of the blood. So it regulates which things can and cannot get out of the blood into the interstitial fluid of the brain. So the blood-brain barrier helps to prevent exposure of the neurons in the brain to drugs and waste products uh, and anything that is out of the normal variation of substances that could harm the brain. So the blood-brain barrier is made up of specialized capillaries that are surrounded by astrocytes, which are some of the helper or neuroglial cells in the brain. Now, what this does is, again, create a barrier so things can't get out of the blood and into the brain, and this helps to protect the brain from those substances. Now, while, the, while this blood-brain barrier does a really good job, it's not perfect because some things do cross. So lipid-soluble molecules like nicotine, alcohol, and some anesthetics can diffuse very easily from the blood into the brain. Some drugs like cocaine and methamphetamine damage this barrier. And, of course, once the barrier is damaged, things can get to the brain that shouldn't. Now, there are several uh, exceptions to the presence of the blood-brain barrier. So, there's not a blood-brain barrier in the choroid plexus, the hypothalamus, or the pineal gland. So, the capillaries of the choroid plexus have to be permeable in order to produce the cerebrospinal fluid and get it to the brain. The pineal gland and the hypothalamus produce hormones that have to be secreted into the blood. So they need access to the blood. So there is no barrier between those three structures and the brain. As I mentioned, the blood-brain barrier does allow some things to pass and some things can't. Now, another thing about that blood-brain barrier, I mentioned that it is missing in the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is your body's chemist. It needs to have access to the blood, even though it is a part of the brain. Your hypothalamus monitors and makes changes according to what is needed. Now, that's a very, very obtuse answer. You're going to get a heck of a lot more of that as you learn more about the brain and the chemicals that affect the brain, especially in AMP2. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Uh, but the emetic center is your vomiting center. So if your blood is full of some sort of toxin, then you need to get rid of it by vomiting as much as you can because maybe you ate something that was spoiled, right? And that botulinum toxin is now in your blood. You need to puke, puke, puke and make sure you've gotten all of it out of your digestive system as you can. So that part of the brain, the emetic center, needs to monitor the blood. And the blood-brain barrier is not yet fully developed in newborns, which means that uh, some things that would not cross the barrier in adults would be able to in newborns. So again, uh, one of the reasons that we do try to take so much care of those new little sweet babies.